25 years all I've had are pieces of that night. Things people thought they heard or thought they saw. You know, I remember most what sticks out to me. The clothes the old man was wearing. He had on this silly brown windbreaker he always wore it when he walked the dog and mom she was always trying to tell him to get rid of it he wouldn't it was his favor when his son with the hospital was covered in blood and then i remember him in the casket the funeral home and he sort of had this preserved look on his face you know the they use makeup, try to make you a little more lifelike. I knew underneath the skin was probably more the color of his dress blues. I wonder a lot what he was thinking about when he was staring down the barrel of that gun. Now that you have that, you don't feel any better. He wanted to go back home and see his boys. He wanted to live for your sake. You know, Vicar said that. All I could think of was that's the kind of man my... That's the kind of man my dad was. Simple and honest, and he loved his family. When I said that, it was like I heard his voice for the first time since that night. I have dreams about the old man. Sometimes he talks to me in them. But this was real. The last words my father said, and who does he say them to? The man who killed him. John, that's over. Haven't you found what you've been looking for? No. I really wish I had known him. I wish you had too. So just exactly what did I walk in on? Oh, I was just talking with Bo. I was going through a really tough time. Losing oh, his job and mom, and he's, he's hurting. He's a Buchanan. He'll be fine. He'll land on his feet. Come on, Spencer. You'd be devastated if someone told you you couldn't practice medicine. Police work is his life. And now more than ever, I suppose. What does that mean? Well, he's going to be working overtime to try to exonerate himself, not to mention the fact he has to deal with Paige's legal problems as well, you know? Really? What happened? I mean, I know she lost her license, but... The minute she was released from the hospital, the Atlantic City Police was there and took her into custody. Yeah, it looks like they're finally going to charge her for what she let happen to John McBain's father all those years ago in the operating room. Oh, well, I had no idea it had gone that far. It's just as well. John McBain was ready to string her up. Poor Bo. I think he'd fallen in love with Paige. I'm sure it hurts. I mean, loving someone that much and finding out that they've been hiding something from you for so long. So what do you figure blood has been up to lately? What has she been up to? Yeah, that's what you guys were talking about, isn't it? You know, Manning, I don't know what your uh, domestic agenda is with your ex-wife, but I'm not getting in the middle of it. Where are you going? Well, I want to let off a little steam. And uh, standing around in a bar talking about your personal relationships, that's not my idea. I do it. I wish we were back at the Cranberry Inn. Me too. That night was so perfect. Except for... No, you know what? I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna let what that freak did ruin our first night together. 
He didn't. It was amazing. At least I thought so. Well, it was off the charts. Careful. Mom is right outside with Clint Cannon. Good. I want lots of people around you all the time. All the time? Well, except for when I'm personally standing guard. <laughs> You're perfectly safe here. I hired extra security to watch the house. My mom did, too. Yeah, I know. They were coordinating with my guys when I showed up. This place is crawling with big, scary, creepy guys. They're not going to let anything happen to you. You take such good care of me. Only because I love you. What's up? Hey, it's Todd. Meet me at the pal. I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Is it important? Uh, actually, no. I'm just feeling kind of lonely and wanted someone to talk to. Yes, it's important, you idiot. Get down here now. Todd wants to talk to me about God knows what. He's a paying client, so I'm going to have to go. Will you be back? As soon as I can. And the minute this is all over, I'm going to take you away. Wherever you want to go. I can't wait. Talk to you later, okay? You're not the only one who's been kissing people you shouldn't be. And who did you kiss? Nobody. Somebody kissed me. And I kissed them back out of force of habit. <laughs> you kissed somebody back out of force of habit? It was David. Uh. David kissed me. I kissed him. And then he was gone. I mean, really gone. He said it was goodbye, and, you know, this time, I, I believe he really means it. Uh-huh. Was it goodbye for you? Was your kiss with Vicky a goodbye? Absolutely. Well, then maybe we should stop kissing other people and start focusing in on kissing each other. Maybe we should. Want to start now? Nobody's watching. Sweetheart, I didn't even know you were home. Uh, we were just... I don't think that she needs an explanation. I'm sorry, I just left my book out here this afternoon. Here it is. Oh, right here, sweetheart. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I think that I should be on my way. Oh, no, please don't go because of me, really. I was just oh. going to go back inside and do some reading. No, 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 not because of you. I, I just really should get going, and uh, I will get a hold of you tomorrow morning. Yes. I look forward to that. Uh, Adriana, awfully good to see you. You too. Mom, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't expecting to find you making out with Clint. Oh, Clint. we weren't making out. Actually, you were. <laughs> well, um, Clint uh, came to the office and he brought me these lovely flowers, and um, then he came over for a drink. I think he came over for a little more than that. What's going on with you two? Tonight he told me that uh, things are really over between him and Vicky, and I told him that things are really over between me and David. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could just 
be honest with each other about things. What kind of things? I want you to know where I was last night and who I was with. You were at the Cranberry Inn with Rex Balsam. How do you know that? Were you spying on us? You and Rex, but I did hire private security people to keep an eye on you. Sweetheart, it's for your own good. Uh, yeah, so how closely were they watching? I mean, did they call you and give you details about what Rex and I did last night? Uh, none needed. <laughs> For goodness sakes, my daughter checks into a hotel with her boyfriend and then doesn't leave the room until the following morning, and it's a bit obvious, isn't it? And you're not upset that we spent the night together? No. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions, and for goodness sakes, it's not like my opinion is going to change anything for you. Okay, this is a complete 180 for you, Mom. What's going on? Nothing, sweetheart. You know, I, I certainly don't approve of Rex, but what am I going to do, send you back to convent school? No, no, you, you, yeah, as I said, you're a grown-up, and, and you make your own decisions now. Well, there's something else I think you should know. Rex and I are in love. No surprise there. What sane man wouldn't be madly in love with my gorgeous, talented daughter? So does this mean you approve that you're giving Rex and me your blessing? Yes, darling. I mean, all that matters to me is that you're happy and... Evidently, Rex makes you happy. Thank you. That means a lot to me, Mom. But, okay, where is this coming from? Is this because of Clint? Are you two getting serious? I like Clint. A lot. And that surprises me because I really didn't think that was possible. After what David did to me, leaving me like that. Did something happen with David today? <sighs> yes. He came to the office and he said that it was goodbye. He was going away forever. Wow. You okay? It was difficult, but necessary. And then, suddenly, the light came into my life again. <laughs> and it's all thanks to Clint. <laughs>